Hey everybody, welcome back. So I think this is going to be at least what I hope is the final episode of my Mechanistics camera jib build. I have the base completely done and the swivel done. I have all the parts for the boom arm printed. I now have the steel rod. And I think I have everything ready to go. So I still want to build a tripod mount for the top. I was going to build a whole nother top boom arm and everything. And then it dawned on me that this just pulls out of there really easy. And I can move to that. All I have to do is build a tri this part to be a tripod mount. And then the entire boom arm can be moved to it. So I've got a couple extra bearings. I'm going to do that, but not in this video. So I'm going to start assembling this. I'm really excited about being able to use this. Okay, so I think other than the weight box, I have this all together. I don't have the camera on it, obviously, but other than that, I think it's all together. Let me show you a couple of minor things I ran across. First and foremost, this adjustment right here. This adjustment right there, that's what keeps the camera level as you raise and lower the arm. So, this will let it keep the camera you know, keep that arm tipped up or tipped down. And the only way to adjust it is to get in with, a, and what he says in the instructions is grab that that bolt with a pair of pliers and, and turn it. I think if I were to do this again, I would put a thumb wheel on it, you know, a fairly large thumb wheel, and I could easily print one and run it down here and then glue it in, spot, in place there so that you could just roll that with your thumb to adjust it. Is that going to be a big issue? I really don't think so, because I don't think I'm ever going to change it once I get the camera level. If I'm wrong, it'll be an easy fix. Just unthread it and put a wheel on it and, and lock it in place. Now, the weight. The author says you could put up to a 2 kilogram camera on the end of that. And the camera that I'm going to be using my positively best state-of-the-art camera that a person can buy uh, for $300 is this Canon EOS M3. Now, I'm sorry to my all my American peeps. We're going to do this in grams because that's what he did. This camera weighs 526 grams, so it is roughly one quarter the weight of the maximum thing he says you could put there. And of course, that's a lot lighter than a phone. Here's a Samsung Galaxy S10, and you can see that weighs 178 grams. And I suspect the camera, the phone that I'm taking with this is maybe a little bit heavier. It's a little bit bigger, and it's got a bigger battery, so it might be 200. Now, to get that camera properly balanced on the camera arm, I figured out this is the amount of weight I need. This is a lead ingot. And I know you're all not going to have lead ingots, but it's the heaviest thing that I certainly have available to me is lead. And it's 2,125 grams or 2.125 kilograms. And then I also have this, which I cut in half to fit in the box. I, put, I poured that originally into a muffin pan. That's 622 grams. So, and if we make that in pounds for you American guys, we'll do that here just to, um, just to make you guys happy. That is six pounds and eight ounces. And the weight box here, now I'm not too thrilled with the design of this weight box. I got to be obvious, honest with you. Maybe he did it a different way first and decided that sucked and turned around and did it like this. But this is upside down. This is how it's going to mount on the device itself. That means to experiment with the weights, you've got to unscrew it, take the four thumb screws off that hold it on. You've got to flip it 
and then you got 16 screws to take out, then you can take the lid off and change the weight. And I think if I had to do it over again, I'd probably find a way to do it so that you did not have to take it off and turn it over and take a gazillion screws out. But I say maybe he tried something else and it didn't work. Now, he also has the plans in there for two different sized weight boxes. And this is a smaller one. Let me tell you something. If I can barely get enough lead in it to balance a 500 gram camera, if you have a bigger one, you are absolutely going to want to print the bigger weight box. But I also lined the inside with sticky foam so that um, it wouldn't all rattle and roll around on me as I moved it up and down because that would be irritating. But with that in it, I can just get this amount of weight in. So I cut these in half. And then here's the lid and I also put foam on there. So when that's on, that's, you can't, that doesn't move around and that's just enough to balance the weight of that 500, slightly over 500 gram camera. And to those of you who are wondering what 500 grams is, in pounds and ounces, it's one pound, 2.6 ounces. Okay, so anything else before I put it the rest of the way together? I can't think of anything. Oh, to hold the camera on, I went on Thingiverse into their little configurator for this thing. And if I can remember, I'll put a link below. And I modified this to fit a quarter 20 bolt with a quarter, tw with a, you know, a six point hex on the bottom. And um, I made this little, one of these little kind of keeper washers, you know, so that when I unscrewed it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't drop out of the bottom and bounce and I lose it. And I made this large enough so somebody, even somebody as fumble finger can me can hopefully not drop it. And if I do, it's big enough that I won't be able to lose it. So I don't know what else I have to say other than that. I think I will go ahead and put it the rest of the way together and we'll give it a test. All right. Sorry, I had to come out to my kitchen to get the best view of this. But here it is in all of its beauty. The camera, the camera, if I didn't mention it, is a Canon EOS M3 and it has the kit lens on it. And um, that is it there. Let me show you how it works. If you didn't already know, it has three heights here, and it's on the, the second one. You can take these, there's two pins in here that ride on the bearings, and you can take those out and let it all the way down, or you can lift it up and there is another height. This here is not tight, so it is balanced just about perfectly for that camera with the six, roughly six pounds in there. You can swivel it all the way around. It swivels very easily on those bearings. It can be tightened here so it does not swivel. There are three little thumb screws there that hold it together that just kind of pinch in against the, the center shaft so it will not turn at that point. It can be, let me show you the end with the camera on it. Bananas are kind of in the way, aren't they? Let me move the bananas. And this end here can be loosened and the camera can be swiveled like that. And note one thing I love about it. Note that the camera never changes angle. No matter how much you raise it or low it, the camera is always at the same angle. The, this can be loosened and it can be rotated all the way around 180 like that. It can be turned from side to side. If I wanted to take a picture of something directly below me, I could loosen the mount on the camera, rotate the camera, and then I could take something straight down like that, or straight up. So if I wanted to look under a vehicle, I could put it under a vehicle and just rotate it like that. Not that this would be what I would typically use to go under a vehicle, but it certainly can look straight up. And I do kind of love the black and white design. When I originally made it, I had intended to use both black and white, but I wasn't really intending to alternate. Um, I was probably about halfway or maybe even a little bit more of the way through the build when I realized I was alternating by accident. And then I kind of intended to do it from that point onward. So if I didn't mention it in any other part of the video, this was designed by 
mechanistic and his name is over here on it you can find him over on my mini factory this this the plans for this cost about thirty nine dollars i got it on a forty percent off sale and i gave him a ten dollar tip because i do think he did a really nice job of it and i use the elegoo rapid pla plus for the great majority of it and i believe it was this part or this part he recommended be printed out of PETG and I used the Elegoo Rapid PETG for that. I paid for everything in this build with my own money. Filament, fasteners, the plans, everything I paid for. And um, I'm really hoping to get a lot of use out of this. I do a lot of videos and a lot of the times half the battle for me is getting the camera into a position at the correct distance and angle. And I'm really hoping this is going to solve that problem. Anyway, we'll know how well it holds up over time because I'm going to start using it immediately. I have a video I'm going to start probably tomorrow where I'm going to be using this. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, please put them below. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye for now.